For part two, we're going to talk about how sound is absorbed and transmitted within a space. The acoustical treatment of a space starts with reducing the noise source as much as possible, followed by control of unwanted sound reflections. Speech privacy is another major acoustic concern for the interior designer. Sometimes it is also necessary to decrease or increase reverberation time for sound clarity and quality. Materials are neither perfect reflectors nor absorbers of sound. The coefficient of absorption measures how efficiently a material absorbs sound. When all the sound energy striking the material is absorbed and none is reflected, the absorption coefficient is 1.0. This happens when sound flies out an open window, for example. The window opening is said to absorb and not reflect all the sound. The noise reduction coefficient, or the NRC, is a useful single number criterion for measuring the effectiveness of a porous sound absorber at mid-range frequencies. One is for perfect absorption, and two is for perfect reflect reflection. It is the tiny frictional drag of air moving between the fibers of fibrous materials that actually make them effective sound barriers. The fiber themselves do not actually absorb any sound energy. The amount of absorption depends on the material's thickness, density, porosity, and resistance to airflow. For effective absorption, air paths must extend from one side of the material to the other. Fibrous bats and blankets will prevent sound from transmitting either between two faces of a partition in a stud space or above the suspended ceiling between the ceiling and the floor above. These materials absorb sound as it passes through the partition's cavity, but their ability to absorb this sound is limited when the wall is tied very rigidly together with wood studs. They improve sound transmission loss significantly with light gauge steel studs. The performance of fibrous bats and blankets is determined by their thickness and uh, they should never completely fill a cavity. The ceiling is the most important surface to treat for sound absorption. These next four images are different types of sound absorbing ceiling treatment that could be used in a building today. Wood slat ceiling, lay-in acoustical tile or drop ceiling, suspended acoustical baffles, these can get very decorative, or a spray-on ceiling finish. Now, controlling noise between spaces is also very important. Mechanical equipment noise can get very annoying. So first, locate these rooms away from quieter areas. And second, choose quieter equipment if possible Third, use acoustic treatments to reduce the transmission of noise. Airborne sound hits a partition and makes it vibrate, generating noise on the other side. It needs an air path to transfer through the partition. If the partition is airtight, then the sound vibration will create the partition itself to create a sound. Structure-borne sound, on the other hand, is when something actually hits the structure. There's no air between the source of the noise and the structure itself. When this happens, the entire structure itself becomes a pathway for the sound energy to travel. Airborne sound is less disturbing than structure-borne sound. Diffraction is the physical process of sound passing through obstructions and through small openings. Kind of like when you put water in a colander. Sound will find parallel or flanking paths in which to travel. A plenum can make great, a great intercom unless it's lined with absorbent material. Sound travels very easily through the HVAC ducts, so these should also be lined if you need privacy. You should not use duct linings, however, in damp areas, though, to avoid uh, mold growth. Transmission loss is basically the measure of a building material or construction assembly to transmit airborne sound. It tells you the sound insulating ability of a wall. The sound transmission class is the rating of these walls to prevent the transmission of airborne sound. So the higher the STC rating, the greater the sound isolation value. An open door will have an STC of 10, 
whereas um, a normal partition or a normal wall will be between 30 and 60. If you want a value higher than 60, special construction is required. The stiffer the barrier, the more sound will be transmitted. Less stiff materials are good sound insulators. Think of a drum head. The tighter the material is pulled, the more sound is transmitted. Most walls are built of wood or metal beams that are then covered with plaster or gypsum wallboard. This does not really provide a very good sound barrier. Adding additional layers of wallboard will help improve acoustical performance. In general, the heavier and more dense a material, the better it masks sound. Now, sound will pass through any available opening. Remember, that has to do with diffraction, like a keyhole or a space at the bottom of the door, or a crack that exists between a ceiling and a wall. For rooms with acoustic privacy or that require acoustic privacy, you want to run the partition from the slab to the deck or the floor slab above. Never locate doors directly across from each other and weather strip windows to seal in any or seal out any sound from outside. Next, check out the final part for more acoustical applications.